Hello, everybody. Uh, by popular demand, haha, <laughs> by one or two people. I'm going to share my finds from our fabulous Chicago record crawl, which was a blast a couple weeks ago. You've seen the pictures, you've read the stories, you know. Somebody had mentioned that it looked like my bag was the biggest bag, you know. That's only because I buy cheap records. Not exclusively, but, you know, pretty close. <laughs> So our first stop, Dusty Groove, great store, I love that store. And they've pretty recently put in the Bargain Basement, which is, records are 50 cents, and it is 90% crap, as you, you probably imagine. But, but when we went, it was a freaking gold mine, you know, let's take a peek. B.B. King, great album. But yes, it's the one with Thrillers Gone, you know. This was cool. Al Green. I love Al Green. And uh, I've been to High Records in Memphis, and this was right uh, in the thick of it, you know. Wayne Jackson on trumpet with Andrew Love, the Memphis Horns, the Hodges Brothers, you know, we lost Teeny recently. And uh, it's a great album, and even greater was, there was also the Still In Love With You album in there, both albums. They only charged me for one, so this has been getting a lot of play, and it plays great, the cover shot, but as with a few of these. This was a cool one, The Grateful Dead at the Mars Hotel. I have one of those half original analog master tape ones that they used to sell. It doesn't sound any different, you know, but I'm trying to sell it. So this one, again, beat cover, but the record is in good shape, you know, and I really like this album. I'm... Uh, Probably a rarity in that I like the Grateful Dead studio stuff, you know? This album I've seen a thousand times and never bought. British Lions, Aftermath, The Hoople broke up. Broke up. Uh, Buffin and Watts and Morgan Fisher formed this band. It's pretty crappy, but it's got that Wild in the Streets song, the Garland Jeffries cover. That one's okay. No introduction. This is a great album. Again, it's shot, but the, uh, the record's in pretty good shape, and I love this album. Chicago Homeboys, you know? Uh, it's all right, Gypsy Woman, you know, all that stuff. So, until a better copy comes along, you know? Isaac Hayes and all his pomp. Pretty cool. Smokey and the Miracles, another, like I said, a lot of these are shot covers and, you know, really clean vinyl on the inside. I played all these and they all play great, you know. And these were all 50 cents each. I don't have any Sinatra 10-inch EPs. I collect Sinatra a lot because the covers are just so great, you know, as well, as well as the music, you know. Um, yeah, except for uh, the last one with L.A. is My Lady, you know. Any Sinatra is pretty good Sinatra. And I'm looking for a copy of Watertown. That's got to be down there one of those days. And the band War. Great, great, great band. Uh, Slipping in the Darkness is the big hit on here. And uh, and we have this and the greatest hits, so still looking. But yeah, all those were 50 cents, you know. The only album I bought upstairs at uh, Dusty Groove was this great... Fugs album, Tenderness Junction. It actually has Gregory Corso playing harmonium on the track. I think it's the only time he ever played an instrument anywhere, you know? And it's no big deal, but it's a promo copy. Not for sale. Well, it is now, so pretty good album, you know? So that was, that was Dusty Groove, you know? So a lot of stuff, but barely spent a nickel, you know? Our next stop was Permanent Records, also in Wicker Park. And I was never there before, even though I'm always, you know, I'm in the neighborhood a lot. And uh, now I know why, because it's, for the most part, wildly overpriced. They have a great selection, and the people, our VC people found stuff there, and people were not super impressed with the, you know, with the employee conduct and things like that. I collect Young Fresh Fellows 7 inches singles. I've got a ton of them. There's still some I need, though. And by and large, 5 bucks, 6 bucks is the most you're going to see those for, you know. They're hard. They're sort of hard to find. But 
And of course, they had what I wanted there, fifteen ninety nine. So, but in the cheapy section, they had a lot of albums for a dollar, dollar ninety nine, stuff like that. I've last couple years, I've been getting into Bebop Deluxe, great band, you know. I mean, a little prog, some of their stuff, and that's not my thing. But they, when they're rocking, they're great. And uh, Bill Nelson and the Boys, and this is a double album with a lot of just sample stuff on from most of their albums which I have about three or four of them, but it was a great album. And this was only a dollar for a double album. This was also a dollar, and this is the one that a lot of Bebop Deluxe fans go nuts for, live in the air age. And yeah, they tear it up, I will admit, you know. <laughs> and this is a great album. I've only listened to half of it so far. I've been, uh, it's got to be loud, so, you know, got to wait till the wife's out or whatever. So that was Permanent Records. And about two weeks ago, before that, two weeks before the crawl, I was at a flea market, and uh, a guy had the Watt Stacks double uh, live album. The movie's great. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out on DVD. But he wanted 15 bucks for it, and it also came with a uh, gospel album. I think it's called The Living Word or something. But he had them together, and he wanted 15 bucks each, but I only wanted to buy the one, and I really wasn't you know, dying to pay 15 bucks for it. And the guy's giving me attitude like, oh, I hate to break them up. So I was like, hey, man, you know. Sorry, I wanted to buy one of the records you had put off for sale, so that was that. And lo and behold, at Permanent Records, got it for a dollar ninety-nine. So uh, I can listen to Rufus Thomas doing the Funky Chicken and the Funky Penguin. You know, that's worth a dollar ninety-nine on his own. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have Shaft on it because of some contractual thing. So, what's the Isaac Hayes track on here? Oh, Ain't No Sunshine. And that isn't the one you sang in the movie either. So, but great album, been wanting it for a while, for two bucks. So that, after that, we went to eat at Rick Nielsen's pizza pizza place called Peace and hung out, had a couple beers, except for Logan had a Coke. <laughs> we don't want to break any laws, you know. Next stop was Reckless Records in Wicker Park. I usually go to the one in Lincoln Park because it's right off the train where I live. So uh, they're about even. Uh, the one in Lincoln Park has a little better cheap section, but I got two, uh, only two records there, but great ones. And the first one I've been wanting to get, just looking for the right price, Dot Wigan of the Mighty Shags. And uh, it's a good album, some great songs, a little bit, sometimes it veers into like musicians trying to play bad on purpose, you know, it's that kind of thing. But uh, Dot is so genuine, and her vocals are so genuinely off-key. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, if you're going to check a track out, Banana Bike. I pissed off my bandmates with it. I made a play it on YouTube in practice the other night, so they were not impressed. And the other one, I, I went to England in April, and uh, we saw Trev and Bev's Move, kind of a Move cover band with two original members, you know. But since then, I've been on a huge move and Roy Wood kick. You know, Roy Wood's just a genius, you know. And I picked up his great solo album, which he was doing concurrently with the move slash ELO. And uh, he plays everything except oboe and something or, something or other. But it's a really great record. Um, it's got a lot of old rock and roll kind of sound to it, but the beginnings of ELO sort of thing, you know, because he plays so many instruments. Yeah, there he is on the cello. Would. But yeah, I've been buying up a lot of this stuff, Wizard albums and stuff like that. So it was great to get this for a mere $3. And that was reckless. And luckily there was a bar next door with PBR so I could have a drink and wait for everybody to, uh, to finish up. And uh, we had our pictures taken at various places. And we stopped at where uh, Championship Vinyl from High Fidelity is right around the corner. That used to be where Club Dreamers was, too. I spent three nights a week there for years, you know what I mean? Uh, Dave Riley from uh, Big Black, when he was homeless, he used to sleep down the block, you know, so he was always hanging out. And uh, Axl Rose came in there one day, and everybody mocked him. So he left, came in with, like, six big dudes, like everybody was going to rush him. And everybody just kind of made fun of him and called him Bill Bailey and things like that. So memories of a great neighborhood, and uh, now they got some great, you know, a great record store, and even though it's hipster central, it's still a pretty cool area, you know? Our last stop was Logan Hardware, which
which I go to relatively often. And uh, they just moved, and the new shop is uh, right down the street from the old one, so it's still in the neighborhood. But by then, we were a little bit tired. We lost a few VC members who had to go on to other things, and the bankroll was, you know, getting getting a little getting a little light. And uh, I th- they got giant area of singles, so I just started roaming through the singles and found something I was really hoping to get, which was left over from Record Store Day, which is a new song by the Sonics, Bad Betty, and it's great. It is a great, great song. Mud Honey on the other side, doing, I like it small. They're not my favorite band, but they got their moments, and this is a good, uh, it's a good song on here too, and I was really happy to find this, because Record Store Day stuff, you know, it comes and goes. So I picked out a few more singles. Uh, British version of The Who, but see action on the other side is actually a Who song I've never heard before. I didn't know if there was one, and I whistled to when I was a boy. Pretty good tune, too. These were all 99 cents except for the record store. Here. And I pick up anything by NRBQ I can find. That's a single. Get That Gasoline Blues. This is the closest they ever had to a hit. I think it was like barely scratched the top 100. I think it didn't make the top 100, though. That was the only chart single in whatever, 40 years, good song. And this one, Booker T and the MGs, Time is Tight is the A side, but the B side is called Johnny I Love You and Booker T sings it. And it is the only Booker T and the MG song with vocals. So I was really hoping to get that. I don't have it in any format. So it's a, from the soundtrack album, Uptight. So apparently Uptight was a movie, I don't know. And the one that I was really happy to get was the original version of Superman by The Click, which is the song that R.E.M. covered, to uh, great success. And uh, Peter Buck was always raving about the original version. I mean, I've heard it before, but it's cool to get on a single, and that was only a buck. So all told, you know, we're talking 50, a little over $50 for the whole day, not counting the the sandwich and the beer. So... uh, it was a fantastic day. The weather was nice until we left the last store, and then it came down like been crazy, and I got soaked. But the record stayed dry. Everything was cool. And uh, I really hope if anyone is coming back to Chicago at any time, or new folks, or anywhere you all be, if you're in town, get in touch. You know, I'm always up for some record shopping and things like that. And uh, there's plenty more stores to hit, too. Uh, all my VC brethren and sistren, or whatever that word is. So, okay, now you saw the finds. Um, feedback, positive and negative, lay it on me. And uh, wife will be home in a little while, so I guess I'll be eating soon, all right? So, good day, have fun, happy hunting. And yes, I put this shirt on just for the video so you can see you know, how hip I am and everything. So, all right, shalom.